Let's, first of all, it was great walking down that aisle and looking at all those caps. You are amazing. Your artistic talents, your expression is something to be proud of. So I'm glad I got to see that from behind. Today's a great honor for me, not only as a CUNY trustee or a CUNY alumni, as I, you've just know, known, um, but amongst you is a, one of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> I just got emotional about that. Um, and it's great when you see individuals, and I'm gonna describe um, a little bit about who she is. But when you see individuals who no matter where they go, they make a mark, the place is never the same once they move on. Everyone is richer because of their participation and presence. And amongst the, uh, that person is one of your graduates none other than Secretary of State, Rosana Rosado. When I knew that Rosana was gonna graduate, I figured out, I said, I've gotta insinuate myself into that process and that program somehow. And lo and behold, you have a hooding ceremony. Uh, so I'm really honored to be here. I was the first Secretary of State but there is no honor in being the first. The only honor comes in being the first if you create a pathway so that you are not the first, but that many, many, many follow you. And Rosana, it is my great honor that you are the Secretary of State. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about who we are and the challenges that we have before us. These are the strangest of times. Every time, I turn on the news, I start finding a new low. And that new low really debunks everything that you and I and many in this room and many outside this room have learned about leadership, about integrity, about the Constitution, about freedom. And it's just astonishing. Every time I think we hit rock bottom, I find like, oh, we can go a little lower than that. <laughs> and the only thing that I'm gonna say is that, that those are models that none of us are ever to follow. Those are models for each one of us and every one of you now in your graduate studies to challenge. We have to stand up because the only thing that is going to get us back to an even keel is our voices and our action. Because we can think, we can debate, we can have dining room conversations and none of that will make a difference. What's gonna make a difference is how we apply ourselves and how we make a commitment to getting back to the old normal before we can start our new frontiers. Because I think we've been set back. As a grandmother, I'm concerned every day about us escalating and, and joining war. And that is something that no one, I lived, I was a generation of, of Vietnam. I don't think any mother, child, or individual should be worried about that and have that ever present in their mind. So I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna tell you three thi four things that I live by. And I learned these from the young woman who's getting her degree today. When I start thinking, I was laughing when he was introducing me, my mother would say, the girl can't keep a job. Uh, <laughs> but when I start thinking about the steps I've taken and the missteps I've done, I've learned probably more from the missteps. And I've probably grown from the missteps. And so that I'm going to tell you that my many missteps is what brought me here today. But I can pinpoint a few moments in my life where those setbacks fueled my success and cemented four simple core beliefs. These are not unique, but I do know that they are the core of everything I am. The first one is be your word. If you say it, mean it. If you're gonna do it, do it. If you say you're gonna do it, absolutely show up. 
It will be, you will be distinguished for someone and respected by someone who is your word. We've seen lately how easy it is to treat your word as, as if it's invaluable. And you see the kind of lack of respect that that does for you and for others. So be your word. Do no harm. That doesn't mean being a pushover. Rosanna's not a pushover. I'm not a pushover. And as Latinos, we've lived in a world of ay bendito, and we're tired of it. <laughs> but it is a deliberate decision to never willfully hurt or do damage. Because you know the old adage, karma is, karma is a bitch. <laughs> One of the other ones is to find the cream in every individual. For too long, many of us and many of you graduates have been judged by either your last name, the way you look, the way you stand, the way you spell your name, the way you sound. None of really is, those are just traits that you have. They don't really define who you are. Because the biggest challenge for all of us, particularly institutions, is to find the best in folks. It gets easier and easier every time that you remember there could be me. So just remember that as you want to be treated, so does everyone else. And the last one is to take action. Remember, they are, there's cause and effect in the world. So for every action, there's going to be a reaction. Take a stand and take that action. But without action, all your desires and dreams are exactly that, dreams. A plan without an implementation strategy is a wish. You cannot live in a space of wish, wishes. We are now in a, in a time where we have to be in a space of action. I'm going to tell you that Rosanna is someone who has always taken action. She's a Bronx girl, very much a boogie down Bronx girl. Absolutely. She made a commitment to her community early on. So everything that I talk about, those core values, those are Rosanna. She has committed herself. And the thing that makes me the proudest is that not only did she decide to give up a career, a very, very lucrative career in publishing, she was really respected, feared in this city, and she gave that up because she had a commitment. And she had a commitment to the incarcerated and wanted to devote herself to criminal justice reform. And right now, we are very proud in this city because of her efforts that we have had some of the strongest and most advanced criminal justice reforms. So, Rosanna, we thank you for that. But not, that wasn't good enough for her. So then she decided to join John Jay as a faculty member, or what, what, it, what was it, what is it called, a distinguished professor, to, um, to, to encourage others in this whole arena called criminal justice reform. And she did that great. But she knew that the power was going to be when she could advance her own education. So here she was after this illustrious career, decided to stop being a professor, take a little job as Secretary of State, and then also try to uh, study for her master's. So she is an example of what each one of us needs to do in our life. Never give up. As a representative of the Department for the Aging, it is never too old to begin again. My mother got her BA at 84. And um, there's a whole story about how she deceived us for years about it. But you, there, is, there is nothing that you can't do. And age is just a factor, just as our names are, just as our backgrounds are. Those are just factors. We can choose to be those things, or we can choose to defy those things and stretch. But right now, I'm asking each and every one of you to take action. And whatever that action is, get in those streets. The other day, we had a wonderful march uh, 
taking some action against some policies that we thought were unfair that being being proposed by other states. But I'm asking you, and the powerful thing that we have, if you don't have money, where you can help promote candidates, you have the most important thing, which is your vote. So I ask each and every one of you to vote. Not only for you to vote, but to make sure that your siblings, your cousins, your best friend also votes. Because we need to take back this country and make this country the country that we all believe in. Not a country that's having six-year-old children die under its watch. Not a country that is separating families. Not a country that is putting us at war and at risk of nuclear um, disaster. And I know that that's such a cheery note on this fabulous graduation. <laughs> but these are times for us to enjoy, enjoy our family and our love, but these are very serious times, and it really requires us to be serious. Con eso le digo, Dios lo bendiga.